Hello Bellevue College. Today we will be doing the Beer's Law experiment. So to begin we are going to start by making our stock solution that we will later dilute in the lab. So in your pre-lab you were supposed to calculate the amount of molar red, also known as red dye 40, that, um, that you need in your stock solution. And so we're going to go through the math quick. And so your solution is supposed to be one point is supposed to be 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar and it states in there that the molecular weight of molar red is 496.42 grams per mole so you'll take your molarity times it by the amount of or the molecular weight and then this is for a 500 milliliter solution, so that equals a half a liter. So as you'll see here, the moles cancel out here and the liters cancel out there, leaving us with grams. And you should get a number that is around this one. So in this case, since I'm the only one doing the lab, I'm going to be making half of that for the solution. And so I, so I'm making 250 milliliters. So with that same math equation, we are going to be going for more towards this amount of grams that I'm about to measure out. And so I'll also go through the calculation of the molarity towards the end. So we can do that together and then we'll all have the same molarity in our post lab. All right, so now we have our balance. And we have it zeroed out with our weigh paper. And remember, we're going for 0 0.0235 grams, or in this case, since there's only three decimal places, we're going for 0 0.02, around 234. So, just want a very small amount here. Open the door. Come on. Looks like we need a little bit more. Oh, well, there you go. So now that we have 0 0.024, you want to write that down. And since, like I said before, we're doing less of our stock solution, we'll go through the calculation together. So write down that number, and then we will move on to making our stock solution and go from there. All right, so now we're back at the bench. So to make our stock solution, we are going to, so I have a 250 milliliter um, graduated, sorry, volumetric flask and a brain, brain fart there. So we're going to start by adding a little bit of distilled water so it's easier for the solid to dissolve. So add some, then we can take our funnel sure it's easy for the powder to get in. So then we have our powder from the balance. Pour that in. Put some water down it. Trying to make sure we get all of that in there. No, it's kind of not the easiest. Okay. Rinse off the funnel. Put some spots on the outside. Okay. I'm going to go over the distilled water. See, I filled it up. 
pretty full, but we're gonna do the rest this way. So you're gonna wanna fill. So we're getting close to the line. So we'll just do very slowly. So ideally you want, when we do all of these, we want the meniscus just to be touching the line. Like here. Sorry. Can't hold it still. As you can see it is there. So then we are going to swirl our solution a little bit just to make sure that it's all mixed together. Tipping it. Look how unfocused the camera is. <laughs> go. Now we've completed our stock solution. Okay, so now we have four 100 milliliter graduated cylinders and then a beaker of our stock solution. And then we have a 10 milliliter graduated pipette on a pipette. What is this? Pipette her, I guess. <laughs> so just so for time's sake and not to bore you, I'm going to go through making one of these completely, tell you the volumes of the other four, and then I'm going to make them myself, not on camera. So for the, for the first solution, we are going to, solution number one, we are going to measure out five milliliters of our stock solution and then fill the rest with water. And then solution two will have 10, 315 of our stock, and 420 of our stock. So, to start, we'll insert our pipette. So now that you can't really see this, but the meniscus is on the five. So, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it into our grad cylinder. A little bit of room for calibration. And if you noticed, I put a little bit of water in the bottom of the cylinder, just after I rinsed it out once to make sure it was clean of any other residue. So then we're at that. And we're going to continue to add water, quick in the process. There's my funnel. I'm going to dump some. Until we get back to the neck. meniscus. I'm going to take a stopper and do what we did with the stock. Mix it up a little bit. So that's how we're going to make our dilutions. So I'm going to go ahead and do two, three, and four. Like I said, two's going to have um, 10 milliliters, three, 15 milliliters of our stock, and four is 20 milliliters of our stock. And then after those are done, we're going to go over to our colorimeter and make our calibration curve so you, we can find the concentration of the end. Okay, as promised, I'm going to walk you through calculating the molarity of the stock solution. And then I'll let you go ahead and calculate the molarity of the four dilutions before we move on. So we had since I did less volume, this was the number of grams of Allura Red we had. 
So, we are going to try and find, so we have that and then we have, we made 250 milliliters of it. So, we will start with the grams. We'll call it a little red. <laughs> and so, we know that the molecular weight of a lower red is 496. You want that on the bottom. 42. So we want our grams to cancel out. A mole on the top. And then we want moles per liter. So we're going to divide by 0.25 liters. Because that's how much solution we made. So, let's see how close we were. I get zero, 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 one, nine, three, two moles per liter. So, that if we write that in scientific notation, 1.93 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So then you're going to use that value to find the the molarity of the four dilutions. So I'll let you do that, and then we will move on to the calorimeter. All right. So now that we have our four diluted solutions, you can kind of see that they get slightly darker as they move on. So we have right here is one, two three, and four. So we're going to measure the absorbance of each of these. So we have the lab open on Vernier. So you can see that we're going to be measuring the absorbance against the concentration, which is on the bottom. I know that the font is pretty small, but moles per liter. So we are going to start by calibrating and then we'll move on. So for this whole experiment we're going to use one cubet and we're doing that so things are more accurate. So wiping again. So we have clear side which that's where the light's going to shine through and then the rigid side. So, just wipe it in general. We're going to calibrate this with distilled water. So I'm just going to start by filling the cuvette about like three-fourths of the way full, just so the light can go through the sample. And so we have the colorimeter set at 470 nanometers, and that's around the wavelength that Allura Red absorbs at. We can open this. So, just set it in there, and then... Okay, so there's a button that says cal. We're just gonna hit that. The light's gonna blink, and when it is done, it's calibrated. And look, it, it's at zero. So we are going to remove our cuvette. Strip by pet. Solution number one. Now you can't see anything I'm doing. We'll just go over here. Just swish it around. All right, now that we've rinsed it twice with the solution we're using, we will fill it up. of the way. Alright. Cap it. Pull our solution out of the way. Wipe it. 
Okay, so since it's not ever going to be stable, we are going to go with something that's in the middle. So I would say 0 0.117 as your first absorbance. So write that down. I'm not going to make the graph since you're supposed to calculate the concentrations. So you can take down the absorbances and then eventually you'll want to graph the absorbance versus the concentration you calculated for each dilution. And that is something you'll have to turn in. So once that one is done, move on to the second one. Okay, now we have solution two filled into our cuvette after it's been rinsed. And we are going to put it back into our calorimeter. This way. Close it. Wait for it to stabilize. Maybe, yeah, 0.232. But you use your best judgment. So, choose, write it down in your notebook for solution two. We'll move on to solution three. Ta da! Solution three. Just like before, do the rinse and fill. Get all filled up. Wipe it down. Open. All right, looks like we're 3.41. Look how stable it was for a second. <laughs> 3.41. That's what I would pick. So you choose. I'll let it jump around a little bit. Make your best guess. So that's solution number three with the 15 milliliters of stock solution in it. Move on to solution four, our darkest, 20 milliliters of stock. Got it filled with solution four. I bend it down. Oh, put it in. 0.43. Oh, six or seven might be a good answer. I'll let you choose again. Then we'll move on to our unknown. All right, so since when we ran the original unknown solution, we got an absorbance that falls outside of the absorbance absorbances we measured before because the solution was too concentrated. We needed to make a dilution to try and find an absorbance that falls within our calibration curve. So. I just went ahead and did a dilution. So I put, you don't want to take this down, I put five mils of stock solution, of the stock unknown solution of Allura Red, and I did that in a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. With, and then put five mils of the stock and then filled it with, up to the line with distilled water. So I um, rinsed the cuvette twice with the unknown solution and then I filled it up as we did before and so you can see now that our absorbance is falling within the range because you remember our highest one is like is around 0.44 so here we have around 0.21 I would say about it's a good number so this is the one you'll want to record in your data sheet and from there, you're going to have to figure out the molarity of the diluted unknown solution. And then you can, from that, be able to calculate the um, molarity of the unknown. Since you need to calculate the percent error, you're going to need the actual molarity of the unknown solution. So I'm going to show you that. And then you'll have everything you need to do your post lab. So here's the concentration of the unknown stock solution. So when you do your percent error, you'll want to use this number 